Good afternoon. My name is George Maxwell. I am the vicar of the Cathedral of St. Philip in Atlanta, Georgia. Today is Friday, May the 1st. Welcome to our midday meditation. Our theme for this meditation will be anxiety, and I'll have more to say that in my reflection. But we'll begin the meditation with the words we usually use to open our noonday prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The colic appointed for today is the third colic for the third Sunday in Easter. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to read Psalm 131 but I'm going to read it in what I think is a wonderful translation by Nan Merrill in her book, Psalms for Praying, Psalm 131. Most gracious presence, let me not be arrogant, nor boast of my virtuous deeds. Let me not seek fame or set my heart on the riches of this world. Help me to calm and quiet my soul, like a child quieted at its mother's breast. Like a child that is quieted, be so my soul. I shall hope in you, O breath of my breath, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. For our reading today, I have selected a se a se a several verses from the sixth chapter of Matthew, verses 25 through 34. I think you'll find them familiar. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not so much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of the Lord. I mentioned that it is the third week of Easter and spring is beginning to come forth as the sun 
shines and our clear skies are there for us to enjoy. But it's also the 50th day of the season we have been calling the season for social distancing for the common good. The 50th day since we began sheltering in place and restricting our activities in order to protect our hospitals and ourselves and our community from this pandemic, COVID-19. The 50th day when our normal patterns of life have been reduced and so much of our life is now confined to our home. The 50th day when all of our family relationships have been collapsed and we're spending a lot more time with each other than we used to spend. Rooms in our homes have become Zoom rooms and our activities without one another have been somewhat restricted. Now in my home where I am with my wife Mary Hunter and our eight-year-old son Robert, the first 40 days was actually pretty good. We enjoyed being together and we found new rhythms in which to enjoy this newfound solitude and leisure. It was anxiety producing. I worked harder than ever to transform or help transform the cathedral into an online platform. Mary Hunter worked harder than ever to do the same thing for the godly play curriculum that she is so involved with and the preschool of which she is the director. And Robert frankly did the same as he learned how to Zoom his lessons, though he is only eight. We did pretty good. And then about day 43, Mary Hunter said, you know, there might be something about the Bible's focused on 40 days because as good as we were doing for 40 days, I'm now starting to feel it a little. And her saying that was like permission for me to feel it too. And it wasn't long after we were feeling it that it was readily apparent it was in our house. It's almost as if all the anxiety of the cathedral or the preschool or the Godly Play Foundation or Robert's school was amplified and then pumped into our house by every electric device we had. And there we were all together with all of that anxiety. You could feel it in our voices. You could sense it in our bodies as it became a more prominent part of our life. And at that moment, I think I had a choice. I could lean into it or I could run away from it. I did what I always do. I ran away from it. This makes me think about the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. You know, I never liked that verse. It was always offered to me as an admonition not to worry, but I worry all the time. And I think some of my anxiety is warranted, but when I'm anxious, that's the last time I want somebody telling me not to worry. And so I did what I always do. I made my life smaller. I retreated into spaces where I could control what happened, or so I thought, but it only made the anxiety worse. It only made it harder for me to hear noises in other parts of the house or have to get up and do things I don't normally do. It was an interesting moment, and finally it dawned on me that the answer is not to run away from the anxiety into a false sense of control, living your life smaller and smaller. It might not be what the lilies of the field are all about. You see, the lilies of the field and the birds of the air they don't think a lot. They don't self-reflect a lot. They simply align themselves with the natural rhythms of nature and go with it. If it's raining, it's raining. If it's cloudy, it's cloudy. If there's food, there's food. And if there's not, there's not. They simply react to those natural rhythms. So as I thought about this verse, I thought, what if the message there is not, don't worry, because I'm already worrying, but lean into it lean into the anxiety. The anxiety is not really the enemy. It's the fear of losing control that's the enemy. It's the vulnerability and exposure and nakedness that is the enemy. And how do you lean into that? 
Well, as I thought about that, I came up with a couple of things, and so I'll share them with you. The first is simply to acknowledge that you're anxious, that this time is anxious, and that that last thing you said you now wish you didn't say. The first thing is simply to acknowledge your vulnerability and how you feel. But the next thing is to know that the freedom that you have in life, this is the time to exercise it. You can respond to these unwanted collapses of space with anxiety and running away, or you can respond by leaning in. You can respond by reframing, laughing, if you will, at the dumb things you do, or the crazy experiences life is suddenly imposing on you. Learning to respect that you can't do what you used to do. I can't just stand at the front door and call for Mary Hunter. She's probably on a Zoom call somewhere, and that's an unwarranted intrusion. Our new rule, by the way, is you have to see the person before you can speak. That's kind of hard to do, but it's been helpful. So my first thought is simply acknowledge that vulnerability, live into it, and see what it feels like. You might find, as I did, that I didn't die right away. But the second is to be charitable, right? The second is to figure out ways to understand why the other person just did what they did. Pause, breathe, come up with a reason, a reasonable reason why they might have just done what they did, because they're probably experiencing the same anxiety that you are. So these two things, they constitute what I'm trying to do as I lean into that anxiety. I've run away from it for a long time, and I've learned that that control doesn't really help much. It only makes my life smaller and distances me from the very people that I want to be connected with. So what I'm trying to do this week is learn from the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, not by not worrying, but acknowledging that I am worrying and also trying to find a charitable reason why that person across from me who I dearly love just did the thing that they just did. Maybe those will be helpful to you. Maybe you'll come up with your own ways of leaning into the anxiety. But I encourage you now that we're into our second 40 days of this new normal to lean into your anxiety. Your anxiety isn't the enemy. It's the fear of vulnerability. And that's a function of your freedom, the freedom to choose how you were going to react to the circumstances in which you find yourself. Amen. I want to read three collects before we say our prayers together. The first is for the collect for Fridays. Almighty God, most dear son, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collect is the collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, a colic for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us with your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And now I invite your thanksgivings and prayers 
for all. close our time together with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And may the blessings of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.